So some guests come to their place and seeing the young boy, they ask, so finished your studies? So he says, yes, uncle, I just finished my studies. Now I've become an architect. So the guest, that uncle asked him, so what have you decided? So he says that, well, I was thinking of doing something or maybe joining a firm where I can get some experience. So the uncle says, anyway, I have a project for you. I have a piece of land and I'm thinking to get something built up there. If you can contribute. So he, he says, with joy, why not? It will give me an experience also and I'll, I'll definitely do something good. So the uncle says, at least give me some few elevation designs. So he discusses the project with him of what he wants to get built on that land and he wants some elevation of it. So this young boy who is fresh has a lot of creative ideas. So he puts all those creative ideas in those designs and he comes up with very beautiful elevations of the buildings. And after finishing those drawings, he calls upon the uncle and says, can I come to see you? I have done some four or five designs. I would just like to show you which you would like. So we can go ahead with that. So he goes up to the uncle and shows him all those designs. So the uncle likes his designs. You have a lot of creativity in you. You have a very bright future. I'm not able to decide which one to choose for my building, the project that I want to be completed. Any when, anyway, he chooses one. And slowly, he hires the contractor and this young boy, he starts uh, telling him how he would like the elevation to be made and the design and everything. So the contractor starts with the building and gradually the building is coming up and with this beautiful elevation, whoever passes by from that road, it catches their eye. So they start wondering, who is the architect of this building? Who is the architect of this building? Many people phone this uncle, who is your architect? So the uncle says, well, I will let you know, not now. So when the building is complete, a grand inauguration is kept. And after the grand inauguration, in that inauguration ceremony, he says, well, I have received so many calls. Who is your architect? Who is your architect? Today, I would like to introduce to that young architect who is full of creativity, lot of enthusiasm. And he brings him on the stage and makes people that this is the young man. He gave me beautiful designs. So everybody appreciates. After the inauguration program is over, when he comes down from the stage, everyone congratulates him. Everybody gives him a lot of attention. Attention. The first part. And that day, when he goes back home, he cannot sleep the whole night. Why? Excitement. The first project 
And so many people congratulated. They may have liked this, they may have... So he is just imagining what people must have liked in it. And that excitement did not make him sleep the whole night. The next day, somebody calls him and he says, Well, we have seen the building, it was so beautifully designed. We have a project for you. So the excitement increases. And every time he is thinking about this building which he has, con he has designed, every time he is giving his energy, thought energy, his all energy is focusing there. So there is an attraction to his own creation. So first the tension, then the attraction. And this second party who calls him up and says, we have a project, we have a piece of land, we would like to construct something, but our budget is less. We would not like to have a very fancy elevation or whatever you have designed, because we saw that there was a lot of space that was wasted. We would like to use each and every bit of the space. And we think you can do it. So, you can make it simple, no, bad, no problem. Please, can we have the design? Second project also went on very well. People appreciated. And slowly and gradually, as he's getting the appreciation, congratulations, uh, people patting him, all those pats, now makes him attached. And he feels after three, four projects, which are very successfully taken up, he has this attachment, he creates a belief, I think I'm one of the very good architects. You know, I think I am one of the very good architects of this city. All are appreciating, there is no one who has said something so this belief that he has created about himself and is getting attached, he's not realizing it. This is how we get attached to some belief. And then we cling on to it. Then there is a, another party who comes up to him and says, so his father gets him an office built, I think, there's no need for you to join any firm to get experiences. You can have your own. You can start your own. So he has an office and people has easy access to approach him. So another party comes up and says, we have heard a lot about you. You are a good architect of this city with a lot of creative ideas. But we have another project, our land is small, but, and our budget is also very small, if you can design, very simple, let it be simple as possible. We don't want all those big, big elevations and all that. Now he feels, if I make it very simple, what would people say? They are visualizing me as a person with a lot of creative ideas, and if I make it so simple, which anybody else can do, so why should I waste my time in this? So, in order to just let them go and not waste his time behind that, uh, putting in energy, because they do not have enough budget to pay him also, so he says, technically, 
This is not possible. Resistance starts. Because he's in this illusion, I'm the best architect. People are appreciating me. So why should I go for this? So he resists, saying, technically it is not possible. So when he says that, this people says, okay, no problem. We'll see someone else. They understood. And when they come out, what do they say? Young person, getting some appreciation, today he thinks himself to be so great. What ego? What attitude? Right? And they go to someone else. That architect welcomes them. And these people share, this young architect, so attitude, so much ego. Right? Attachment. And after some about eight to ten projects very successfully done, then there is an addiction to the self image. He's so much addicted that he cannot compromise anywhere. And when he starts showing his attitude, he has the fear inside of being challenged by somebody, of listening to the criticisms from people. Some people come and tell him also, what happened? Did you say something? Did you show your attitude? People are discussing about your ego, what is the matter? And that is when, when people come to know that he is showing his attitude, what do they do? Oh, let go, don't, don't go to him. He is not a good person. Atonement, he has to pay the price for it. People are not approaching him. And then he starts introspecting. What happened? Why are they doing this? Why are they criticizing me? Why is work not coming to me? No one is approaching him. And he has to pay the price for it. Right? So five A's, how it makes us a slave, to our own negative emotion. So, how do we manage and heal that emotion? Another five A's. Five A's that makes us slave. Five A's that helps us to manage and heal that emotion. So the first A is awareness. Awareness. Which Baba, what, what does Baba do? Eh? Awareness, self-awareness. Second day, then we acknowledge. So awareness, acknowledge. Third is then accept the self as we are. And after accepting, the fourth is ascend. Then we start rising. Our consciousness starts rising. And the fifth A is when we are able to attune ourselves with the higher energy. So this five A's manage and heal our negative emotion. Awareness. It reminds me of a beautiful story. Hmm? Some have heard that story. That once there was a Guruji and he had a disciple. So the Guruji was looking after an ashram 
One day he has a thought, I should go to the Himalayas and do some penance. So he calls upon his disciple and says, look, I want to go to the Himalayas to do some tapasya, but in my absence, I'll be away around about six months. Can you look after the ashram in my absence? So he says, why not? Definitely, I can. So he tells his disciple, look, I will leave early morning, day after. Tomorrow I'm whole day here. So if you have anything to ask me, you can definitely ask me. But tomorrow is my day of silence. But still, if you ask me, I will write it down and tell you whatever, I'll answer your questions regarding anything about the ashram. So the disciple says, okay, no problem. Both go to sleep. The next day morning, the disciple has a thought, let me ask Guruji, what is that which I have to pay more attention to during his absence? So he goes up to the Guruji and says, Guruji, can you give me some advice that I have to have more, I have to keep attention of in your absence? What is it that, that I have to pay more attention to? So the Guruji had the day of silence, so he takes up a piece of paper and he writes a word on it. And that word is, Awareness. And he gives it to the disciple. The disciple looked at that word as awareness, that's all. I think I can do it. Just have to be aware of the position that he is giving me, which is of a Guruji. I'll be the next Guruji, but I have to be aware of that. And whoever comes, I have to be aware of them also. That is what maybe the Guruji is trying to tell me. So he says, I can do that, no problem. He goes out of the room, and every time he looks at that chit, awareness, then he has the feeling the Guruji did not explain anything. At least he should have written something before and after. Hmm? So after thinking a lot on that word, he starts getting confused. So then, after th two, three hours, he goes back to Guruji's room and says, Guruji, I'm a bit confused. Because you have just written one word, there's nothing before, nothing after. Can you elaborate? So Guruji again takes the same chit, one word before and one word after. The word before was also awareness, the word after was also awareness. Awareness, awareness, awareness. And gives it to the disciple, so the disciple thinks, okay, what Guruji is trying to tell me is, I have to develop this awareness very deeply. And I think I can do that, no problem. So he comes out of the room, looking at the chit, but after coming out, again and again, he has this question. Why did he stress so much on this word, awareness? What is he trying to tell me? Awareness, awareness, awareness is equal to what? So then he goes up to the Guruji again after two, three hours of hmm, churning on it. And he says, Guruji, can you please explain? Awareness, awareness, awareness 
is equal to what? So Guruji again takes that chit, is equal to awareness. The message was very clear, but the disciple was not able to comprehend. The message was that if he is on a responsible seat to look after the ashram, he has to be constantly aware of the quality of thoughts that he generates, the quality of his speech, the quality of his actions, his behavior, with everyone coming to the ashram, the quality of his perception, that he should not be looking at anyone's weakness, he has to be looking at the specialities, qualities, the awareness of the attitude that he develops, he should not become ego-conscious, awareness. The message was so clear, where the awareness is not needed. Whenever we are, wherever we are, we have to be constantly aware. And Baba has created this awareness. Every day in the Murli, He underlines, this awareness. You are not this body, you are a soul. This awareness has to be awakened. This awareness has to be lived. This awareness has to be experienced. This awareness has to be our natural state, our form. We have to be the embodiment of this awareness. Sometimes we also hardly realize, Baba is constantly telling us about awareness, 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 awareness of what? Awareness is equal to what? Same like the disciple. But when I become the embodiment of that awareness that Baba has created in me, that you are not this body, you are a beautiful angel, you are a beautiful soul. And I acknowledge, I have to acknowledge it. Till I do not acknowledge, the awareness just remains as words. I have to acknowledge in my life. I have to accept it. The acceptance has to be there. When the acceptance is there, I am being that. Till then you cannot be. Isn't it? So accepting and being it. And then only we can uplift our consciousness. We can uplift, elevate our internal stage. Then only we are able to elevate to a higher stage. We elevate our stage, we elevate our consciousness, ascend. And when we elevate, that is when we are able to attune ourselves with the higher energy, Shri Baba, and allow that Sakash, allow that rays, allow that energy to just come into me and let it flow naturally. And that energy heals my damaged emotions, it heals me from within. Till we do not receive the power from Baba, we do not receive that energy, we are not in a tune with Baba, till then we cannot attune ourselves with everyone else. 
when we are attuned with Baba, then it becomes easy for us to attune with everyone. Because we change this vision, each one is a soul, each one is a beautiful angel, each one is a special being. So my vision changes, my world changes, and with my world, everything starts changing around me as well. We heal ourselves completely from within, and that is meditation. Meditation means to heal thyself from within. This is how we heal ourselves from within. And not only that, but then we are able to master our feelings. We master our feelings. And how do we master our feelings? Five Ds. Five A's that damage, five A's that heal, and five D's that masters. The first D is disidentifying the self from that gross image that I have created about myself. I disidentify. I'm not that. Now I get my new identification. I am a soul. So disidentifying the self. The second D is then detaching from that which I was. Now I know what I am. That awareness helps me to be my real self and detach myself from the false identity that I had created about myself. The third D is then I am able to easily discriminate what is right, what is wrong, what is worth, what is not worth. I am able to easily discriminate what I have to do, what I don't have to do. This power develops. And the fourth is, then we are able to take right decisions. If the discrimination is there, then what is right, what is wrong, then I am able to take right decisions. Yes, I can do this, I can I will have to go this way, not this way. So we take right decisions. And the fifth D is, then there is determination. Till then there is no determination. Right? Many a times people say, we lack determination. We want to do so many things. We have decided also, but the determination is not there. So the determination can only get, come on the basis of these five steps. I need to disidentify from that body consciousness and switch over or shift that consciousness. Soul. Complete soul consciousness in the complete system from belief to destiny. Send it. So we are creating our beautiful destiny of the new world. And that can be only created when I bring a change in my beliefs, in my consciousness, in, and create that awareness. Yes, I am that soul. Right? So when we are detached, completely from that body and bodily world and bodily actions and bodily interactions, bodily relations and everything, I have to live in the same world, but with a new vision. They are also souls. These are all beautiful angels. These are all beautiful people. So with this new vision, Everything starts changing. 
and we are able to change the destiny. That is how Baba changes our destiny. He just gives us that awareness, that's all. But with the awareness, everything starts changing. And the destiny is in our hands. We create our destiny as we want. Right? Our response that doesn't matter, because they do not have the knowledge. We understand that. They don't have this knowledge, they don't have this awareness. But if I have this awareness, let me be a source of inspiration for them. So when I start bringing a change in myself, then definitely that is going to impact them, because they are also constantly watching me. And when everything starts changing in me, my complete world is changing. Now there is always a smile, a glow on my face. Then they will realize, what is it that is making you filled with that energy? How is it that you can be so energetic? How can you be such a person? When somebody does something wrong, but still if you can let go, what is it? They are seeing me. So Baba says many a times in the Murli, instead of giving them knowledge, when they see your actions, seeing and believing. Seeing is believing. When they see, their belief system is also going to change. We cannot change by making them realize, look, you are holding on to a wrong belief, you shouldn't be doing this. No. When I bring a change in myself, when I let go of those wrong beliefs that I was holding on to, and still if I'm able to visualize them as souls, and always interact on the basis of values, no matter what they are, gradually it is going to change them as well. They will also take the inspiration. Seeing is believing. Their belief will change for me, definitely. Still, we can be quite sweet, soft with them, and they will cooperate. If I am like showing my attitude, it's not going to work. That's why Baba says, when I talk to someone, even with that sweetness, but at the same time, if I have that vision of a soul, this is a soul, it has its own limitation. You know? When I accept this, that person with its limitation, yes. Can, can I help you? Can I? Because then we'll be able to do this together and it will help us both. So in that manner, maybe they, wherever they are stuck, and if they say, yes, I'm not able to understand this, we can help them. Maybe we can do this. And at the same time, if I appreciate that which they have uh, taken my help, otherwise many a times because of ego, people don't like to take help also, you know, they don't like. So, we appreciate them. Not that they should appreciate me for my help, but we appreciate that they have taken it. And when we appreciate that, definitely, they will also realize there is something that has changed in this. Our positive vibrations are going to affect them. That is going to make them if not today, two days later, maybe they will. What do we have to let go? We are letting go, we let go the beliefs that we are holding on to. Right? We are bringing this change in our awareness. 
And when we are able to bring this change in our awareness, we let go of our old beliefs, then naturally we experience real freedom. And when we are experiencing real freedom, we are light. And they are able to sense that. How did, how is it that you are not in stress? So once or twice, maybe, they will have this feeling, okay, they are going to let go. What let go? Not anything that we are assigned with. We are not going to let go that. But we are letting, we are let going the old beliefs that we were holding here. Because that gives me the real freedom. Everybody wants freedom in today's world. But they don't understand real freedom. What does it mean? The freedom when I really experience after letting go my old belief system. I am free. That's what many a times Baba mentions in the Murli about that parrot, Totaram, sitting on the tap or sitting, holding on to the branch on which is sitting and whoever is crossing by, Totaram, Nalke Parnei Batna, and sitting on there and speaking the same words and holding on to the tap. That is when people are going to laugh. Sometimes we also hold on to those old things and we are trying to tell others, we need to let go of this. That is when they laugh at us or they feel, oh, these people they are just like Totarams. We have to be a source of inspiration. Let them see that freedom. Let them experience the lightness. No stress. And they will feel as if whenever you come, we come to you, we always see you as if you are full of energy. Happiness. How come you experience this happiness? What is it that you have received? And we say, freedom. We are free from our stresses. We are free from our old habits. We have brought this change. And that is when they feel, how did you do that? Because I'm not able to give up this. It's very difficult. How is it that you did it? This is showing how even in a big gathering also, in any company, you find a Brahmin, his face is glowing. They look different. Isn't it? Yeah. They look different. Yes, yes. 